It is important to admit that even though short-run total cost curves can cross, as we just shown, they don't have to cross. And in order to illustrate that, I've drawn an extreme example, which is another one of the ones from the class handouts, which are on the web. <coughs> the ISO cost lines here are are uh, solid and the isoquants uh, linear are dotted. So that's uh, th that's different between the way I drew this graph and the way I drew the other one. So let's think about producing Q1, which is this isoquant. So you want to be on Q1, which is the dotted line, and you're asking, what's the cheapest way I can be on Q1? That is, what's the lowest total cost line I can achieve? The lowest total cost line you can achieve puts you right here, which means no fertilizer. So if you were in the long run, you wouldn't buy any fertilizer at all. You're not in the long run, you're in the short run, or the medium run. And so, it was a little hard to draw, Perhaps I'll pause for a moment. What I've done is to draw in green that if you start at F1 and you need to get the Q1, then the relevant isocost line is going to be this one. If you start at F2 and then you get the Q1, then the relevant isocost line is this one. And clearly the first isocost line the one that's closer to the origin, this one here, is is uh, the better one. And so F1 is superior. The same thing is going to be true, even just intuitively, at F2. I mean, at Q2. Think, of, look, look at the Q2 isoquant. This is this one here. You want the lowest total cost curve. If you had complete freedom, you'd go here with no fertilizer. You don't have complete freedom. You have to choose between F1 and F2. I think it's pretty clear that F1 is going to be better than F2. Right? F1 is going to lead to this kind of isocost line. F2 is going to lead to that kind of isocost line. Certainly F1 is going to be better. And so what's optimal, as, as I wrote here, is, is not to use any fertilizer at all no fertilizer used. So that's what's optimal. If you can't get to what's optimal, I uh, also, also wrote it here. So the next best thing is F equals F1, never F equals F2. So short-run total cost with F equals F1 always lies below short-run total cost with F equals F2. And therefore, one gets this graph where you don't have a crossing, where SRTC1 is always below SRTC2. I drew it here for a type 1 cross-section. It could also be a type 2 cross-section. You don't know. The point is that you have short-run total cost curves that don't cross. Now, from now on, we're going to assume that they do cross, because that seems to be the intuitive situation. But short-run total cost curves don't have to cross, and this is an example where they never will.